Well, if the devil incarnate tells you that you are fucked, and your family's fucked, pretty sure you're fucked. Welcome to 31 Days of Horror. I am Morgan Film Fan. This is day nine. Today's film is Metamorphosis, and let's jump into some scares. So, Metamorphosis is a South Korean film. Is a South Korean film that was released in 2019, it says, but it was just released on Shudder as a Shudder original, outside of this Blu-ray that I recently discovered uh, randomly, and it was actually one of my final picks for 31 Days of Horror. I absolutely adore uh, foreign films, and I absolutely adore South Korean horror. The South Korean horror is literally some of the best horror that there is out there. And I understand that, you know, everybody, not everybody enjoys reading films or whatnot, but um, South Korean horror is so well produced, uh, more way more often than not and um they're just masters at the work of of what they do with uh with horror cinema so um basically what you get in this film right at the start it's it's very it's very basic at the start the it's your typical like exorcism thing there's a priest he's exorcist he's trying to, you know, release a demon from this, uh, this young woman, and then she, you know, attempts to jump out the window, and she threatens him before she, you know, like, actually falls. She's like, I'm, you know, I'm gonna return back to this world, and I'm going to screw you and your entire family up, and I'm gonna tear you, you know, everybody in your family to shreds, and yada yada, and then she falls and dies, and, um, this priest is i'm not even gonna get into names with this film because i wrote them down but i can't like pronounce them i um the the, the way they're written and the way they're uh spoken in the film uh i just can't pronounce them so i'm i'm gonna stay away from that i'm gonna i'll i'll try if i have to but uh the, they're definitely um i don't have that dialect to uh pronounce them properly so um but regardless, this guy, this priest, has, like, an enormous amount of guilt after this situation. And, uh, I wouldn't say he loses, he lo I would say he kind of loses faith, but, uh, he just kind of retires because he doesn't want to go through that torment anymore. He doesn't want to relive it, rethink it kind of thing. And then you get another plot point where you have his family, um because this guy is the, the brother of another man, um, who I cannot, they call him Mr. Kim, so, um, and Mr. Kim has a, uh, has a family of three kids and a wife, and, uh, they're moving to this new house, basically, and when they end up moving to this new house, um, Mr. Kim ends up meeting a neighbor, and, um, the neighbor is, he basically makes a lot of noise at night. Like, he's always keeping them up at night, pretty much. Everybody in the household is waking up all the time. And uh, he's basically a disturbance kind of thing. So he goes to visit um, the, the neighbor just to, like, meet him and talk to him and kind of say that, you know, like, what are you doing at friggin' 3 a.m.? <laughs> Uh, kind of thing, you know, like banging on walls and like drilling everything. So he walks into this guy's house, which again, I've mentioned this on this channel before. This trope actually makes me laugh. Like, why would you just enter somebody's house unwelcomed? Like, what you, who walks into somebody's house, you know, just opens the door and walks in when it's not your home? Like, it, this happens so much in horror films. It's hilarious. It's, it's probably my favorite trope is when somebody in a horror film 
will walk into somebody else's house unwelcomed. Just knock, knock, knock. Oh, nobody's answering. I'm just going to walk in. Like, it happens so much, it's hilarious. But this guy does that, and he walks into this house. Um, there's, like, dead stuff everywhere. Like, this place looks like a satanic freaking uh, sanctuary. Like, you got upside down crosses, you got dead animals hanging by their necks, you got dead cats, you got the, a goat that's just like ripped open on the wall. Like, th this place looks like, like a crazy person, like, like, <laughs> like a satanic cult, just like last, uh, last night's film. Um, but then the, the neighbor comes back, and this is what I found funny, because I don't know if this film has like a translation problem, or the subtitles weren't written perfectly, or, um, or if it, if it was just intentional. I See, it seems like there's a lot of times where a film will have subtitles and I think sometimes the translations like are literal translations, like every word, and then there will be sentences that don't really make sense in English. Um, this film has a lot of that and this guy is like, because uh, he went to, to also visit the neighbor because the neighbor ended up parking uh, somewhere on his driveway or something like that, like somewhere, somewhere where he wasn't supposed to. And, uh, his son basically had a chair and this chair in front of this guy's car was destroyed. So he also went to the house to talk to him about that. And he walks into this house and this place is like Satan's sanctuary. And then Buddy shows up, like the, the neighbor, the owner of the house, he shows up and, uh, the father is just like, Oh, you know where you parked, you shouldn't park there. And then just leaves. Uh, what? <laughs> um, yeah, you got like Satan Sanctuary going on, but let's worry about the parking job. <laughs> let's worry about that, because that's clearly more important. Um, there's another scene in the... It, it's, uh, it's involved in a hospital because one of his daughters ends up passing out because... She has a dead cat hanging outside of her window, and um, the the mother is at the hospital, and she's like, "Oh, like what ha Like the father comes to the hospital, and the mom's like, "Oh, she passed out. It was pro. It's probably like the doctors say it's probably just stress from moving. Um, could be stress from moving, but also it could be because you saw a dead cat outside your window. Like it, you know, it's." It, there's moments in this film, I don't know if it's like black comedy, um, but there's moments in this film that'll happen occasionally like that, that I like absolutely laughed at. But um, other than that, after the, after the, the father meets this neighbor, um, moments start to happen where, like the, originally, like, uh, or sorry, later on, the uncle ends up coming back. But uh, moments start to happen where they literally black out and, and occasional things will happen where they, they do things that they don't remember doing. Um, like, you know, the father trying to murder the kids, the mother having some kind of tantrum at the, at the dinner, at the lunch table or whatever. Um, the daughter, there's a scene, there's a scene that's fucked where <laughs> the, the father and like, He's at the edge of the girl's bed and he's like, oh, my daughter's all grown up. And it's just like, where is this going? Where is this going? It, uh, you know, uh, watch the film to find out where it goes. But, um, but everybody in the family is having these moments. There's a moment with, where one of the daughters um, goes, to the, uh, goes to the bathroom while the other daughter is taking a shower and is you know, says something along the lines of, like, are you, I forget what she said, she's something like, are you guilty, like, uh, you should kill yourself, or, like, for, for our parents' mistakes, or something like that, uh, something along those lines, but, um, as the film progresses, this keeps happening more and more, and everybody starts to completely lose it, and not remember the, the things that they've done. So, and, and it's, it's like 
on and off. So they'll, they'll lose it, they'll, they'll black out, and then they'll wake up again, and then somebody else will be blacked out. And, and like, the, the father will have a hammer, and then, he, and then he's like, why do I have a hammer in my hand? And then the wife will have a knife, and then she's like, what? Like, it's that kind of psychological horror, especially, that terrifies me a lot. But, um, but that's basically where the film starts to go until the end of the film where you get like basically another like exorcism situation with one of the family members and I'm not like there's tragic things that'll occur um and there's tragic fates too um to some of the the people involved but uh you know, I'm not going to go that much into spoiler territory, but I would say the climax and the epilogue of this film is absolutely brilliant. Not even kidding, for a horror film, for a horror film, 99 of, out of 100. 99 out of 100. Why out of 100? Because I hate decimals. But I would honestly give this film 99 out of 100 because I think it's brilliantly executed. But... Um, what else could you expect from a Korean horror film? You know what I mean? So, and even like the devil entity, um, starts become like, cause it transports, uh, into different people and individuals. That's why they, as soon as like when that demonic presence is inside them, they, they lose themselves. They don't, they don't, they black out kind of thing. They, that's why they have no recollection of what happened. But eventually it starts to take um, a form of like its own thing. So it becomes like ghostly and it becomes extremely supernatural. It's a really, really brilliant film. So I cannot recommend Metamorphosis enough, especially if you're subscribed to um, Shudder, if you have a Shudder account, um, or just go by the Blu-ray because this film is awesome. This film is phenomenal. I loved it. So... That's Metamorphosis. That's Day 9. So subscribe to Morgan Film Fan if you like to listen to the sound of my voice or if you like my film reviews. And I will be back for more. Um, stay tuned, subscribe, and take care. Until next time. Cheers.